Grill Greats. Today we're grilling ribeye steaks on a Weber kettle grill. Ponderosa style? Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue of Wisconsin and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. So subscribe to the channel and give that bell a great big ring so you get notified when we put up a new video. So the first time that I ever saw those perfect crosshatch grill marks was back in the 70s when my parents took my brother and I to Ponderosa Steakhouse. I remember thinking, geez, how do they get such perfect grill marks? and they're not even burnt to a crisp. Can any of you remember their funny theme songs and their commercials back then? They were kind of catchy like this one. Hey, we're cooking. Hey, we're cooking. Yeah, we're really cooking Ponderosa. We're really cooking for you. Cook, cook, cooking. But my favorite one was when the kids said, right on, Gramps. Square meal, square deal at Ponderosa. Alrighty, Haas. Grab your chimney and fill her full because we're gonna have a Ponderosa on grill grates. All right, so we're gonna wanna take a chimney and fill it plumb full. Or if you're like me and you have two chimneys, you can fill them both three quarters full and that'll give you that little extra that we need to get this grill up to 500 degrees. But in this cook, we're just gonna use one full chimney and then I'm gonna add some other charcoal to the top. And with that extra charcoal, that'll give us that push to get these grill grates nice and hot, infrared hot, to be honest with you. So here's a little barbecue hack for you. Get a little cat dish, and then you can put your lighter cubes right on top of it, and it gets it up a little closer to the charcoal. To me, it seems like charcoal lights a little faster because the flames are a little higher. Put our cat dish in the center, put the cubes on top and light it up. Cubes are all lit, now go ahead and put your charcoal chimney on, center over the top of it, just like that. Set your timer for 20 minutes, because we want these coals to get nice and hot. We're gonna dump these when the smoke is all gone and you just start seeing a little bit of fire coming out because we're gonna add more coal to it and a little bit of cherry wood. Now it's time to go season our meat. Today we're gonna keep the seasoning pretty simple. We're gonna use a 50-50 blend of kosher salt and black pepper along with some granulated garlic to spruce things up a bit. These ribeyes are Angus Select. Beef can handle a little extra seasoning so you can get a little liberal on this. But we start out, get both sides covered, and we're gonna flip them over and do the same on the back side. And then after you get both sides covered, I usually put them together like this, get the sides a little bit, but you can also just roll it across the cutting board and get all that loose stuff that, that didn't get caught. All right, so our ribeyes are all seasoned up. So let's head back out to the grill, check on that chimney and see if our coals are hot enough where we can dump them in. Well, I'm not getting sponsored in this video, but I wish I was. But grill grates come in all shapes and sizes, and they can be purchased for all types of grills. To get you a good start to find the type that you need, check my links below. Grill grates are made of anodized aluminum. They'll never rust. Now these help amplify the heat and also distribute the heat throughout the grates. And another great thing about them is they help reduce flare-ups. Mine are seasoned and I've used them many times. They almost kind of resemble a cast iron pan. Now, if you got a brand new set of them, you're gonna wanna lightly coat them with some canola spray for the first two or three times. And don't use any olive oil. Olive oil wants to smoke at 400 degrees. Plus, they're gonna leave them kind of sticky. And after they've cooled down, just rinse them off with some water. Don't scrub off that season you've worked so hard to establish. Now, after every third cook or so, I use a little Dawn dish soap, kitchen scrubby, and my grill grate spatula to go ahead and clean them up a little more thoroughly. Do it gently, you don't wanna scrub off that seasoning you work so hard to establish. Now, you can also use the back side of these to cook with. I've cooked hamburgers and bacon on it but I typically only use the rail side because I'm always looking for those crosshatch sear marks. Now these will cook three steaks. Today I'm only gonna cook two. Now if you take good care of these, they're gonna outlast the existing grate that's in your grill right now. It's kind of hard to tell because today it's so sunny out, but you should be able to see a little bit of the flame coming up and we're burning clean. Now it's time to dump these. Remember, we gotta get out our cat dish. So just grab your charcoal chimney, grab your tongs, pull it over, and you got it. Set it off the side and watch out, it's hot. Now it's time to spread the coal. We're gonna dump it throughout the center and kind of even it out because my grates are 10 and a half inches wide. So we're dumped, this is hot, set it off the side. We got a few pieces of cherry wood that we're gonna throw in the coals. And then I filled up my other chimney about halfway so we can dump the charcoal right along the center. Take your charcoal rake, spread out those coals evenly across the lit ones. Take your standard grate, set it in, and then put on the lid and let it go for five minutes. Make sure that your vents are completely wide open. 
we want to get this heat going. Now go back in the house and grab your meat. They have had plenty of time to absorb that salt and that seasoning and they're ready to start grilling. Our new coals are started and now we're going to add the grill grates. Our grill's at about 400 degrees. Now we're going to put our grill grates on top and we're going to get them up to temperature. Make sure you put the lid back on. We want to get those grill grates up to about 550 degrees. That's going to give that great perfect crosshatch ponderosa sear. Now I got this great little gadget at Harbor Freight for under $20. We're going to use this to check the temperature of the rail. It's an infrared thermometer. It's a nice little gadget to add to your backyard barbecue arsenal. This thing also works great to test the temperature of your pool so you know when it's time to go swimming. 45 degrees. We got some time to wait. Plus you can use it to check and see how hot your wife is after you forgot to get milk on your way home from work. Oh stop. Mediocre pissed. Спасибо! Now this is a great little thing that you might want to purchase too. I use two cotton and one nitro glove on top for a little protection for my hand. It helps you can press that food down a little bit. And if you buy the black kind, people think you're a pro. Now in all seriousness, you can buy any color you want. We're going to be cooking these steaks at 550 degrees on the grill grates for about eight minutes. We're going to start at two o'clock, set a timer for two minutes, and then turn them for another two minutes. And then we'll flip them and repeat the process. All right, so our temp is right around 600 degrees. Perfect. They're great. We'll take the first one and put it at two o'clock. Huh? And we'll also repeat it for the second one at two o'clock. Smash them into the grates a little bit. Gives you a better sear. Set that timer for two minutes. Now that you got your steaks put on, let's go rinse off the cutting board. Now you just touched raw meat, so switch your glove. All right, there went our timer. Now we're gonna rotate them to 10 o'clock and set the timer for two minutes. Make sure you smash them down again. Then we'll rotate the last one. Smash that one down too. Get our lid back on, and next we're gonna flip it. Okay, there went our timer. Now it's time to flip them. We're gonna go back to that two o'clock again. Wow, look at that. A little bit of a flare up there. Smash them down. As you can tell, snuffed them out. Square meal, square deal at Ponderosa. Peeled this glove off, putting this new one on. All right, there went our timer. Last flip to 10 o'clock. And remember to smash them down. Set your timer for about a minute. Pull the glove. Now you're gonna to wanna to grab your Insta Read thermometer because on this last 10 o'clock turn, you're going to want to check in about a minute in to see where your temperature is. I personally want to pull mine at about 128 degrees. Okay, there's our timer. Let's check it at one minute. 128, 129, 131. These are done. We're going to pull them off and we're going to let them rest for five minutes. Okay, so now put the lid back on and the heat will help clear off the grate. You're still going to want to rinse them off because a little bit of grease is going to be trapped in the valley. Now, if you're going to cook more steaks, you're going to want to take some paper towel and run it down to get that grease off. Your second cook, you're going to get that grease catching on fire on that rail and you're going to get some scorched meat. It's pretty tempting to take a bite out of these right now, but we still want to give them that five minute rest so those juices, as they're running off, can kind of get absorbed back into that muscle. Tint it with aluminum foil and let them rest. Five to 10 minutes. Perfect day for a Ponderosa steak. It's really warm out. Okay, to sum things up, we started with a full chimney. Once it got nice and hot, dumped it in the kettle, added another half a chimney so we could reach that 500 plus temperature. Now it's time to season your meat to your liking. We got the rails of the grill grates up to 550 to 600 degrees so we can get that perfect sear mark. Total cook time was just under eight minutes. We started the ribeyes at the two o'clock position and rotated them to a 45 degree angle. We flipped them over and repeated the the same process. On the last turn, we started checking the temperature at that minute mark so we could get the doneness that we prefer. Just let them rest for five to 10 minutes and then you can celebrate your Ponderosa. All right, it's time to cut into these. They smell great and I'm hungry. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is just start cutting them in half and then we're gonna cube them up. Now that's a perfect medium rare. Now I'm just gonna slice them up and have a piece. We'll start with this one right here. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> now I gotta try a part of the spinalis. Awesome. 
I hope you enjoyed this Ponderosa. Incredibly awesome, tender and juicy. Right on, Gramps. All right, boys, grab some plates, but you're gonna have to drink water. I forgot milk today. This week's comment comes from William Myers. Love the video, Ricer. This was the one for me. I am a noob, and I always either burn the food or give my family salmonella poisoning, or as I call it, salamander poisoning. I am definitely buying a meat thermometer. Can't wait for the next video. Well, thanks, William Myers, for watching. I really appreciate it. And I tell you what, that meat thermometer is probably the best tool that you can use. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, become a subscriber, leave a comment below because you never know, I might read yours in the next video. I just want to say it's been fun so far and I'm happy that we're getting more and more subscribers. And thanks for watching. You know, there's a time and a place for everything. We can do it. Nice little barbecue backyard Gavin. <laughs> smart asses. Smart asses. I live with a smart ass family. <laughs>